Hello, everyone. So, yeah, uh, how not to use Prometheus? Uh, I'm Shivangi, and uh, I'm a software developer at Zeta Suits. Uh, I've been using Prometheus for around a year now. And in this talk, I'm just going to share my experience. So it's more of like uh, how we should avoid beginner mistakes and save us, a, save us some time in the long run. So yeah, uh, we'll, in this talk, we'll see like at each stage of using Prometheus, what are the kind of mistakes we can make and how we should be avoiding it to save our energy. So maybe like setting our expectations right or while we are instrumenting our code to querying or setting up the alerts. So setting our expectations right. What I have seen in my experience is that one of the biggest mistake that we can make while using Prometheus is to expect it to work as a logging or tracing solution or at times expecting it to give us 100% accurate results. Prometheus is good enough for us to make operational decisions, but expecting it to uh, give us like, expecting it uh, to be used for the use cases where we care about uh, each and every increment would be a bit more. So we should try avoid that and when we have these expectations set right, we can avoid like lot of mistakes in long run. Along with that, we should uh, be careful about thinking uh, Prometheus as a standalone solution for a long-term retention. Maybe we can look at uh, look to integrate Prometheus with solutions like Thanos or uh, Cortex or M3, right? So yeah, like once we have our expectations right, most likely our next step would be to integrate Prometheus, uh, instrument Prometheus along with our code, right? So uh, one of the mistakes that we made uh, while starting off was not using our uh, matrix names, right? It's it's very simple mistake that we can think of, but it can cost a lot. We are registering our matrix once, but we'll be using it way more often and it's not just you who would be using it, the entire team would be using it. So having a non-clear matrix name can create a lot of issues there. Apart from that, uh, most of us face the cardinality issues a lot of the time. I think the best way to deal with it initially is to uh, have a rough idea of what cardinality you would be introducing with your matrix and just have it like maybe if you are cre creating a PR or in your commits, if just mention that this is what cardinality you are expecting. Uh, that saves a lot of time. Um, by this time, like most likely you would be having a Prometheus setup uh, and you can see your matrix in, in some endpoint. Uh, but you have to configure the targets later on so that uh, Prometheus is able to scrape your matrix. Uh, uh, you can play around with the scrape interval and retention time as you like, but uh, just keep, uh, just try to uh, keep the scrape interval and retention time within the limits. Otherwise, you can see like broken graphs, which would eventually not be very useful and you have to go back, refactor and like just spend a lot of unnecessary time over there. Along with that, uh, relabeling has been something which comes in very handy. Uh, you don't need to deploy your code again and again if it takes time. You just can uh, use the relabeling in your configurations and you are good to go for some time till you deploy your code changes. So uh, this is uh, like, once you configure it, it's the best part because now you are ready to see like uh, what your application is doing. You can query your data, right? But when we query uh, Prometheus, uh, there, there are multiple chances that we can overload Prometheus. By the way, we are querying uh, our matrix. So just try to like uh, have, just try to like avoid querying uh, high cardinality matrix with lot of variables that can could put lot of load on your Prometheus and your queries can time out making your entire monitoring thing and effort go useless. So just just 
just be careful about it. Along with that, try to split your dashboards as much as possible based on your use cases. Instead of having everything in a single dashboard, it's, it's better for both the ways. Like when you try to visualize your dashboards, it would be easier to understand what's going on there. Along with that, uh, it will be like way it would it would load up pretty quickly so yeah try to do that uh, so while we were setting up the alerts we we had way too many noisy alerts and one thing that we learned was every now and then we would figure out okay the timing that we set between two of the alerts was way too less or either we were not setting up proper dependencies. So for example, if I'm getting an uh, alert uh, on that, uh, my success rate of the application is pretty low. But I'm also getting the alert that uh, my application is not working. So like having the dependency between two can help you not get overwhelmed with the alerts. Um, and as important as it is to get uh, less noise in alerts, it's equally important to uh, not miss out the alerts. So um, if you know like how you can avoid uh, having the missing matrix, uh, try to do that, but at least have some idea beforehand that you have missing matrix for uh, whatever use case and try not to have alerts on top of it or expect alerts to be triggered on top of it. So yeah, I think, Oh, like these are some of the use cases which we can take care of at the initial stage and if we avoid it we can save a lot of time going back refactoring our code um, these are a few of the resources that i have found pretty useful in my journey of learning prometheus and if you would like uh, to uh, dive deeper into these topics they are like pretty interesting to go through uh, yeah Thanks and like, free, feel free to like uh, use the slides uh, if you like. So yeah, thank you.